Michigan's attorney general announced felony criminal charges Tuesday against 16 Republicans accused of taking part in a scheme to overturn President Biden's election victory. In a typical election, voters head to the polls and the winning candidate gains that state's electoral college votes. In Michigan, the political party of the winner designates a group of individuals as electors who report the results to the federal government on January 6th. Joe Biden won Michigan by 150,000 votes. Donald Trump lost the state. But prosecutors say these 16 Republicans sent a letter to federal officials claiming they were the real electors and that Trump had won. Earlier, Michigan's Secretary of State told CBS News these charges are a win for everyone. So I hope all voters can see this is an act of protection for every citizen in our state to make sure that no matter who they vote for or who they support, that the winner, the right and duly elected winner of an election is the one who we will legally be bound to support. Let's bring in Clara Hendrickson. She is a politics reporter for the Detroit Free Press. Clara, you actually spoke with some of these individuals before the 2020 election. Could you start by giving us a sense of the kinds of uh, folks we're talking about and the roles they had in the Republican Party? Sure. So uh, first of all, this is sort of an interesting mix of individuals. We have a group of prominent Republican Party leaders who are facing charges, including the former co-chair of the Michigan GOP and a Republican National Committee woman, as well as some local officials, uh, a mayor of a small Michigan city, a township clerk who's actually in charge of administering elections in their community, a school board member. And then many of these folks are just ardent Trump supporters who became really animated to get involved with party politics when he first ran for office. So I spoke with most of these people ahead of the 2020 election, and they really cast that year's presidential race in really stark terms, describing it as a kind of matter of national survival. And many of them expressed a sense that it would be an honor and a privilege to get to cast the state's electoral college votes uh, in the event of a Trump victory. And now they're facing federal or uh, state criminal charges from the attorney general for their alleged actions in a scheme to overturn Michigan's election. And when you spoke with them, um, did you talk to them after the results were in? In other words, did they believe that uh, thoroughly that President Trump had won and that this was perfectly a perfectly reasonable thing for them to do? Well, many of them ended up participating in efforts to fight the results of that election. So there was a group of them, three folks who filed a lawsuit to try to overturn the election that was rejected. And then they allegedly went on to meet in the basement of the Michigan GOP headquarters to sign a fake certificate of electors and submit that to federal authorities. And what's been the response from the current Republican Party of Michigan to all of this? So the state Republican Party shared uh, via Twitter an unattributed statement basically denouncing Nestle for announcing these charges and accusing her of having authoritarian tendencies, vowing to deploy activists as needed. And this is sort of the kind of rhetoric we saw a lot uh, in the last election cycle, last two election cycles from Republican Party leaders. So it's not surprising. And Nestle did try to preempt political attacks against her charging decisions by basically saying that she has a duty to act in the face of what she calls overwhelming evidence of criminal activity. And what is the is there a separation within the Republican Party between officials, lawmakers, those who are elected and the party um, uh, that might issue uh, such a response as they did there? Do they see this the, exactly the same way or is there a difference between the real party stalwarts and those who just happen to be Republicans? So we're sort of increasingly seeing this disconnection between the formal state party apparatus and Republicans who are trying to launch an effort to wrest control of the state legislature from Democrats. And I'm sure we'll continue to see that play out. Um, so far, we haven't heard a ton from GOP legislative leaders, but we did get a statement from the House Minority Leader in the State House, basically saying he's focused on election law changes that have been recently signed into law and says it's up to Nestle to basically prove that these charges aren't politically motivated. Clara Hendrickson, politics reporter with the Detroit Free Press. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.